Starting lineups for the Seattle Mariners on a cool night, but not unreasonably so at Fenway with the wind blowing in. Spike Owen will lead off and play shortstop. Phil Bradley in left field. Ken Phelps at first base. Gorman Thomas, the hitter. Jim Presley, third base. Yvonne Calderon in right field. Danny Tarnable at second base. Dave Henderson in left field. And Steve Yeager, the catcher. The umpiring crew will be Vic Voltaggio behind the plate. Tim Welke at first base. Crew chief Dave Phillips at second. And Larry McCoy calling the plays at third. As we mentioned, the wind blowing in, a pitcher's night, then here's one pitcher that's ready to go, Roger Clemens. Well, one thing, he's won every time he's had a chance to be a winner here in 1986. 3-0 in the year, 1.85 earned run average. 24 and a third innings of work for Roger. He's given up 19 hits. That's impressive. He's given up five earned runs out of a total of seven. Walking 10, striking out 19. And as we mentioned before, he'll look at this Seattle ball club tonight, who right now is hitting a very small 207, which... Uh, is, as you might imagine, uh, the low mark for a, an American League team offensively. That doesn't mean to say that they don't have some guys that can hit some pitches. That is for sure that they can. They proved last year some young men in their lineup can really get around on some fastball. So it may be important, as I was mentioning last week, in the start for Roger here against Kansas City. They also possess some very good fastball hitters. So do the Seattle Mariners. And you kind of hope that they stay a little bit on that low slide uh, that they have been on until they can get out of here and play some of these other Eastern American League foes. Well, Roger beat Chicago 7-2 April 11th in Chicago. He won his next two starts, both of them here, Kansas City and Detroit. He's had trouble with Seattle. In his career, he has not beaten them. He is 0-2 against them. And, of course, is making, yeah, he was 0-1 last year, making his first appearance against them as we see Seattle for the first time as they come as part of a long road trip. They've already played four games on the road trip and lost three of them in Oakland. They started their trip in Oakland and are coming here to face the Eastern clubs along the seaboard, uh, including this series starting tonight. Red Sox having enjoyed a day off, a legitimate day off, following the rain out in Kansas City. They got home at a decent hour and had the day to themselves. So they're ready to go. Tony Armas unable to play. Steve Lyons in center field for the Red Sox tonight. And Bill Buckner still favoring a bad elbow is the designated hitter again with Don Baylor at first base. One thing that may have helped Ned, though, is getting Rice two days off after that knee had flared up on him a little bit. Right. And he is, with Armas out of there, has to be in that lineup in the outfield. Spike Owen, the shortstop hitting 246 with one run batted in. Mariners have come across bad ways at the plate of late. After a pretty good start, they won five of their first uh, seven or eight ball games and then started dipping as a hitting team. There's strike one. We are underway at Fenway. Blows him down with a fastball up and in. The given temperature, 56 degrees. A little cooler, it feels, because the wind is blowing in. A little bit of an east wind. Owen up there, able to handle a bat, able to bunt, so Boggs is close at third, and down he goes again. As Roger has been inside on him three straight times, two of them like that. Not very nice to your former teammate, I guess, is it? <laughs> You've been a little close to <laughs> Spike. Two balls, one strike. Well, he's got to know something about him. Apparently he knows that he can't get around on an inside pitch, it looks like. Strike two. Two and two. foul back by Spike Owen. Owen's been a pretty good road hitter so far this year with this club. He's had 10 hits and 29 times up away from the kingdom.
Make it ball three, strike two. Fouls a good pitch back as Roger comes in up and in again. Owen will be followed by Phil Bradley and Ken Phelps. Red Sox had seen nobody but the Tigers, the White Sox, and Kansas City for a couple of weeks, and now they're going to see nobody but these Western clubs for a couple more. Good three and two pitch again. Foul back. Play the Mariners, Oakland, and California here, and then go right out, out to the coast after that and play the same three teams again in an eight-game set. two count and finally got Spike Owen. Actually you make a, a little better hitter out of a uh, Spike Owens once you get the count to three and two and he did foul off some pretty good pitches from Roger but looked like Roger may have said well let me get just a little extra and he scooted that one right by Mr. Owen. So there's one of them gone and Phil Bradley the left fielder is up. Ball one to this uh, fine looking player. Who right now is struggling with a 239 mark and has had five hits in his last 40 times up. Two and nothing. Bradley hit an even 300 last year and 301 the year before. His first two full years with Seattle. There's a strike. Right-handed pitcher Edwin Nunez for tonight's game. Two-one pitch, three and one. Also, there is a change in Thursday's pitcher for the Mariners. Bill Swift will start instead of Matt Young. Paul Mirabella, a pitcher, has been optioned outrighted by the Mariners, and Edwin Nunez activated. Three and two again, and the second three-two count. Three ball, two strike count to Bradley. And strike three. Well, a mess of pitches, but they all turned out right for Clemens so far. Two straight strikeouts. Not a bad sequence. Roger got behind quickly, two and all, then went to the breaking ball to get the strike, and then back to the fastball. Bradley went for a borderline pitch there with a count three and two, and your fastball hitter. You've got to get it turned up one thing a little bit quicker than that. Last two of those fastballs just right by Bradley untouched. Here is first baseman Ken Phelps, who's been up only 15 times with three hits. Alvin Davis has a, a jammed a shoulder. The uh, normal first baseman, he is uh, out of the lineup and is on a day-to-day -day basis. So Phelps is playing in here. Has two home runs, though. He's a long ball type. Takes ball one. Clemens pitching on a coolish night, but actually this is the best weather he's had so far. He has pitched on three cold games previously. It's a two and nothing count to Phelps. And that missing high, three and zero. Oh. So a bunch of pitches this first inning for Roger Clemens. Gorman Thomas is the designated hitter. He's on deck. Gets in there with a 3-1 count. Outfield uh, shoveled around to to right on Phelps, a pull hitter. Strike two. Cuts that inside corner. Phelps trying to wait the walk. Jack knifed a little bit from that, but that caught the inside corner very nicely. And now for the third straight batter. A 3-2 count. What a pattern in that first inning for Roger Clemens. 
goes three and two on Owen Bradley and Phelps and strikes them all out swinging for rather startling and awesome first inning. So he seems to be on right now. And after a half inning of play, it's Seattle nothing and the Red Sox coming up. Dwight Evans in right field. Wade Boggs at third base. Bill Buckner, the designated hitter. Jim Rice in left field. Don Baylor back again at first base. Rich Gedman, the catcher. Marty Barrett at second base. Steve Lyons in center field. And Glenn Hoffman back to the wars at shortstop after sitting out with the bad ankle. And out on the mound, the number one draft pick in the nation in 1981. Seattle got him, and he has been worth it, Mike Moore. Big man out of Oklahoma, about 6'5 of him, somewhere around 205, 210. He'll be making a uh, start number five for him. He's had a one and one record of 2.08 earned run average. 34 and two-thirds innings of work for the big right-hander, and he can be nasty on some right-handed hitters. He has given up 30 hits, 12 runs, eight of those have been earned. He's walked 11, struck out 19. That 11 and 19 ratio, not really uh, indicative of him. He'll be around that plate a little more often. He will not walk uh, as many in a ratio to strikeout as he has currently running for himself. The Seattle Mariner Ball Club has given up 21 home runs. And Moore has given up four of those. Two and one against the Red Sox last year. And those were victories here. And on his season doings with them, he has beaten them three times and has lost to them three times since coming up after being their number one choice in the country. Roy Evans, Wade Boggs, and Bill Buckner will be up. Evans batting 242 with one home run and six batted in. Outfield straight away on Dwight taking strike one. We might be feeling more of a breeze in the natural wind tonight. So far we have with, <laughs> with uh, Edmund, with uh, Clemens in the first half. Has some more from this guy, too. Foul back, and it's nothing in two. We talk about intimidation a lot as a right-handed hitter, especially, and I mentioned the fact more really tough on right-handers. When you look at his frame, you think he's going to step on you when he lets it go. Strikes out Evans. Breaking ball, and Evans claims he tipped it and was into the dirt and came into the glove of Steve Yeager. That's what he is claiming. And of course, if that's the case, then it would not be a strike. It has to be caught cleanly, but overruled by Vic Voltaggio. So we've seen nothing but strikeouts so I, far. I don't think this ball hit the ground. A good hard slider is another thing that makes him tough on the right-handers. We'll check it out a little closer right here, though. No, sir. He just kind of got the glove turned the wrong way, really, but... I do not think that ball hit the ground. Wade Boggs taking ball one. Boggs at 318 with a couple of homers and 12 batted in. Boggs last year hit 357 against this club. Well, we got something hit anyway down to shortstop, and Spike Owen throws Boggs out. One, two down in the Red Sox first inning. Bill Buckner playing again as the designated hitter still uh, bothered by the sore elbow and the ball hitting an even 200 one home run had it in Kansas City there's a shot to center field and Henderson back he has got it for the out a one two three inning for Mike Moore and the pattern may have been set after one inning no score top of the second inning in a scoreless game we would like to welcome back to the booth Kathy Kurtz Ferrari 
who was our AD last year, all last year. She's done one thing, she's changed her name. Got married, and we're happy to have her back. And we are very pleased to have had Amy Croak here for the times before Kathy returned. So all is well. Amy will be working with the opposing team broadcasters. We'd also like to welcome back Walter Underhill, who was uh, the Writers Good Guy of the Year Award at their Writers Dinner last year. He's now back behind the wood, the hardwood in the uh, bar upstairs in the press room. Welcome back to Walter. He'd been uh, indisposed for a while. Roger Clemens was welcoming the Seattle Mariners pretty heftily in the first inning. He struck them out one, two, three. The pattern was the same. He went uh, three and two on three hitters and got him swinging. Gorman Thomas, designated hitter, hitting 220 with four home runs and 10 runs batted in. Ball one. There's a shot to left field. Rice back. He's got it. That ball hit hard. Thomas, who has hit the Red Sox hard in the past, this time lines to Jim Rice in left field. One down in the second. And Jim Presley, third baseman up. He's hitting 208. That's far below what he can do. Two home runs and nine runs batted in for Presley. Seven hits in his last 51 times up. The kind of struggle that he has had. There is a strike. Hitting 137 in his last 13 games. He's a better player than that and better hitter than that. Strike. Cutting that outside corner. Roger seems to be in the rhythm. Velocity is there. That didn't take long at all. A little wrinkle on that third pitch. And Presley is out. Strikeout number four for Clemens. Not much question about Roger being on a roll right now. He's doing it both ways with the heater and with a good sharp breaking ball. That one didn't get really to where he would like to have had it, but it had enough velocity on it that still these Mariners with a little bit of a slow bat. Roger even got the breaking ball by Presley there. Yvonne Calderon, the right fielder, lunging for strike one. Clemens has struck out ten or more five times in his career, four times at Fenway. He's got strike two on Calderon. Working on, well, on his fifth strikeout now if he can get it. Fans are starting to get excited early. Nothing and two to Calderon. Got him. Right across that outside corner. And two more strikeouts for Clemens. He's got five. After an inning and a half, no score. Jim Rice leading off in the second for the Red Sox. No score in this one. As Roger Clemens has put on a five strikeout display in the first two innings. Mike Moore. Fly ball, right field, fairly deep, but under it out there is Calderon, and he's got it for the out. Rice with a 235 average and three home runs flying out on the first pitch. Raining in New York right now, delaying the start of the game between the Minnesota Twins and the New York Yankees. The scheduled pitchers are John Butcher for the Twins and Ron Guidry, 3 0 for the Yankees. California underway at Toronto, no score in the bottom of the first. Kirk McCaskill against Dave Steve. Steve has yet to win a game. Don Baylor up and a foul tip for a strike. Baltimore at Chicago. Tom Seaver has returned to California for a, de a death in the family. He'd been out there before attending his mother. So he is not with the White Sox. He was scheduled to start tonight. In tight to Baylor, who has a 234 mark with four home runs. 
Nelson, Gene Nelson, the White Sox pitcher against McGregor in Chicago tonight. Ball two. Kansas City Royals nothing. The Tigers nothing. Bottom of the first at Detroit. Dennis Leonard against Frank Tanana. Oakland at Milwaukee. Cleveland at Texas later. 2-1 to Don Baylor. Mike Moore on the mound. Slider for a strike. Two and two. The New York Mets with a nine-game winning streak on the line are leading the Atlanta Braves 7-5 to five in a wild win in the sixth inning at Atlanta. Ron Darling is long gone, relieved by Bereni and Leach for the Mets. That's high to Baylor, three and two. Mailer relieved by McMurtry for Atlanta. Strawberry hit a home run, is a three-run job, his second. And Claudel Washington hit one, his second, for the Braves. Slowly hit the third, charged by Presley, barehanding it and safe at first base. Off the bag with a foot was the first baseman, Ken Phelps. And it'll go as a base hit for Baylor. Good little play by Presley. Of course, with a 3-2 count on Baylor, Presley's going to be back to take advantage of that range and coverage. He comes charging hard, makes a good, strong throw, and I believe Baylor would have been out had Phelps stayed on the bag. But he tried to cheat to help that play along a little bit. Came off the bag a little bit too early. And Tim Welking right there to make the proper call. Little squib hit for Baylor. He's at first with one out and Rich Gedman up. Ball one. Gedman batting 293. A couple of home runs and six runs batted in. Other National League games. Montreal's at Cincinnati. Nothing, nothing after one. Smith against Soto. Strike on Gedman. Houston at Philadelphia. The Astros have won three in a row. They did not score in the top of the first. Philly's now batting. Ryan against Shane Raleigh. Nolan Ryan for the Astros. Three and two, and Raleigh is two and one. A nice save there by Phelps on a bad throw by Moore. The Cubs are at San Diego, St. Louis at San Francisco, and Pittsburgh at Los Angeles later on tonight. One and one. Chop to the right side and taken care of by Danny Tartable. That moves Baylor to second. Gedman is out there two away. Danny Tartable making a visit to Fenway Park for the first time, a place where his dad played on the pennant winners of 1967. Jose Tartable, there's Danny who already has hit more home runs this early season than his dad had in the career, I believe. <laughs> I think Jose had two, I'm not sure. <laughs> but the Bull was a good player. He was fast. He was he was really a, uh, a great addition to that club. He came over in 66 and stayed for two or three years. And it's his son now playing second base. Marty Barrett. The breaking ball by Mike Moore, ball one. Barrett is hitting 327. Tops on the club. One home run, five batted in. Jose, the bad singer in the shower, though. <laughs> yeah. Well. No matter whether he had a good day or a bad day, he was still bad <laughs> as a songster. <laughs> I, I joined him in several choruses on a train once cross country when we had to take a train instead of a plane. One ball, him. one strike. Played with him just a short while in Louisville in 1970. Uh, and he was caught in one of those numbers jobs yeah. there, and they, they sent him there, and he played for just a little while. He was quite a guy, though, a very, always uh, upbeat. Oh, he was that. He was one of those guys that wanted to play 15, 16 innings every day instead of just nine That's if you right. were to let him. He could fly. He could run. Made one of the big plays in the 67 season when he threw out Ken Berry at home plate in Chicago, which potentially the winning run of a ball game. And he didn't have an arm at all, but he unloaded and Barry, who could really run, was put out by Elston Howard. One ball, two strikes. Well, looking at the size of Danny Tartabull against Jose, he's about twice as strong looking yeah. as Jose ever was uh, from their bill. 
Jose, kind of like a uh, soda straw if he turns <laughs> sideways. A little Lamar Lamar Dan Boyd in, in Yeah, uh, just Jose. about. That's right. Good comparison. One ball, two strikes. Breaking pitch. Watch it. One and two with two away. Jostled the monitor. Ready? Beautiful silhouette there. It's all in negative. Ball and two strikes. Grounded toward third and foul. Presley up with it, ready to fire, but called foul by Larry McCoy. And Baylor goes back to second. Two up and one on in the second inning for the Red Sox in a scoreless game. Tigers got one in the first. They lead Kansas City one to nothing after one inning of play. Trying to pick up Baylor for the first run if he could. Fly ball pretty well hit to left center field back toward the gap and it is taken out there by Henderson going away on the warning pad. Barrett's bid for extra bases falls a little short and that is all for the Red Sox in the second. They leave one and after two innings of play nothing nothing. Game moving along here into the third inning with the Red Sox and Mariners no score. People starting to get the bat on the ball a little bit in the second after a very silent first inning thrown by two pitchers. Here's the way Barrett hit that ball. He's going to have a little make a little noise off that wall I think Ned, that wind not be blowing right in his face although as the flag will tell you right there not really a stiff breeze blowing right into Marty's plate charge up pretty good Henderson a little bit into right center not that far. Henderson got over there to make a nice running catch and then had time to protect himself so those pants he got that right forearm up. Here is Danny Tartable taking ball one. Tartable started the season very in a, in a hurry with those four homers. He hasn't been hitting much lately but then the rest of the club hasn't either. You know what happened that he had a little stomach virus got sick uh, for a couple of days he came back. And then lost a total of like 12 pounds over that time of being sick. And I, I don't know. I'm not sure he's really back to his full strength yet. Not if you lose 12 pounds in a hurry like that, you are. Lost seven of them after playing that one game when he came back. And he was just kind of all run down and, and let out. They couldn't figure out uh, what exactly was wrong with him. And then that, since then, that's the reason I uh, couldn't figure out why he had hit more home runs. Goes for the 3-0 pitch off Roger and fouls it back. Roger running the count to three and nothing and now it's three and one Tartable uh, kind of slide he's been in has two hits in his last 28 times at bat. That's what he gets for hitting all those home runs so early. <laughs> and Roger gets back again on a three two count after going three and oh. Kind of drawn a little bit too much attention to himself pitches around the league say wait a minute here here's somebody we got to be reckoned with and we'll bear down a little harder. Goes to Barrett at second. And that's one away. Fans wanted to strike out number six from Clemens, but they got the ground out instead, and that's fine with Roger, considering he went 3-0 and to Tartable. One down in the Mariner third. And Dave Henderson, the center field, coming up. Henderson hitting 128. Two homers and five RBIs, but in the last couple of years, he at least has a, on at least two occasions beaten the Red Sox with home runs. In this ballpark, a strike to him. Nothing in one. He has two hits in his last 20 times up. Foul back. Watch it. They're coming up here about as hard as they're coming into the plate. Nothing in two, the count. Thank goodness we got a little longer to watch it, though, those hitters do. That's <laughs> right. Strike three, number six. Henderson called out on strikes right on that outer edge. 
Well, Roger does not waste any time here. He's just looking for a good thin spot on that plate to use, and he did. He just had maybe half the ball on that outside corner, and the rest of it splitting that batter's box. Here is Steve Yeager, catcher, and in strike one, making his first journey to Fenway Park after spending his time with the Dodgers in the National League. Hitting 133 right now. One ball, one strike. New veteran who, uh, well, several spring trainings ago, his name was bandied about as possibly coming to the Red Sox. All Gavin has to do is just to present the target right now to, to Roger the way he's going. He's upstairs with that one. Two balls, one strike. Hager kind of got double trouble this year. He's got not only learn American League pitchers, but he's got to learn American League hitters. Yeah, Allow all those guys away and try to keep some kind of a mental book on them when he can go get it when needed. Strike two. One ball, two strikes to Yeager. One thing, Ned, uh, Seattle still with a little bit of a young pitching staff, and Yeager's experience back there should help them along a little bit. Crowd yelling for the strikeout. Ball of three. Or two and two. Yeager came over to this ball club for left-handed reliever Ed Vandenberg. The pitch fouled off. Smallish crowd, but right now they're being treated to some pitching here by both pitchers, but mostly by Clemens with the strikeouts that he has. Six of them so far. Fly ball, center field. And Steve Lyons in the starting lineup right there. So that takes care of the third inning and Clemens has retired nine batters in a row. And after two and one half innings it's nothing nothing. Along the left field wall at Fenway Park and nobody's hit that wall yet. Only one batter has come close Marty Barrett. As Mike Moore here and Roger Clemens have been dueling. Clemens has fanned six and retired nine batters in a row. Moore has given up one hit and he struck out the first batter he faced in the game, but has had no trouble. Steve Lyons coming up. Lyons starting now in place of the injured Tony Armas. He's very uh, he's upbeat. He was hyper around the batting cage today. He just couldn't wait to get started get back in the lineup. He's only been to bat five times this year with one hit that hit knocked in a run in Kansas City two and nothing from Moore Lyons Hoffman and then Dwight Evans this inning that hit happened to come with the bases loaded never know that may start a string like Pat Tabler's got over in <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> Boy, has a long way to go to get that. I don't know what kind of records they're ever kept about that, but I'm kind of glad they started with Tabler because <laughs> his figures are amazing. He made him start a record, uh, yeah, record service on that particular uh, situation. 3-0 to Lions. Three balls, one strike. Steve didn't have to get up too high for this game. He's he's <laughs> high almost every day anyway, but yeah. he likes to play. He likes a lot of energy. Now has the count three and two as Moore comes back from a 3 0 count. Ball up in the air to Henderson in center field. One out. Henderson with three put outs so far. Now somebody. Else coming back into the wars, Glenn Hoffman. This is kind of a replay of last year, except it's a month earlier when Hoffman went into the lineup when Gutierrez was hurt, and when Lyons came into the lineup when Armas was hurt, right around the latter part of May. This time it's the latter part of April, and they're getting back into it again. One strike to Hoffman, who says his ankle is fine, and he's kind of glad to start getting back here on grass. He's going to be playing his first eight games on grass anyway. And he is behind on the count, nothing in two. Wasn't too anxious to start breaking back in on artificial turf. 
Mike Moore to Glenn Hoffman. One ball, two strikes. Got him. And Moore has a strikeout, his second. So he has picked, gotten the leadoff batter and the number nine hitter. Good nasty breaking ball pitch from Mike Moore here. Of course, this is what he can do to you. You have to certainly respect his fastball, and his control is awfully good. As I mentioned earlier, those 11 walks and 19 strikeouts, not a good ratio for him at all. Two down very quickly to the leadoff hitter, Dwight Evans. He went down swinging in the first. Seattle nothing, Boston nothing, third inning. The game just about as advertised so far. The pitching matchup between Clemens and Moore. Here's a base hit up the middle on a breaking ball, and Evans is on. Two out single for Dwight Evans. The second Red Sox hit. Moore trying to get to the outside part of the plate with this breaking ball. Doesn't quite get there. Dewey's got Paul on his mind. That ball just stayed pretty much right in the middle, and Evans just shot him right back up the middle. Yes, sir. Well, that's some low hemp right there running at you. <laughs> Two down to Wade Boggs with Evans at first. Boggs grounded to shortstop in the first. And strike one right on the outside edge. They have the left fielder, Phil Bradley, well toward the line, but they do not place the center fielder, Henderson, over that far into left center. He's more or less holding his own, only a couple of steps over to left center field. Tigers won Kansas City nothing after two at Tiger Stadium. Dancing back from that one. One ball, one strike. Toronto has taken a quick lead over California. One nothing after one at Exhibition Stadium. Evans just back, but the ball got away from Phelps anyway. Well, it might have hit Dewey on the hand or on the elbow. I believe it did. He goes diving back with that hand outstretched to the bag. He's just about the right size lead. The question is, is whether Phelps got any leather on it to slow it down a little bit. Or he maybe did. Yeah. Marty, it's kind of blocked it some. One ball, one strike. Evans bluffs and Boggs takes. Ball two, two and one. California's tied up Toronto now. One, one in the second. Still raining in New York. Delaying the start between Minnesota and the Yankees. Evans at first base, two out, third inning, no score. Now Boggs has the count his way, three and one. slide this time. Well, that's a pretty good heat there from Moore to Phelps. I'll, right. tell, I'll tell you. He's coming right up over the top and he's not taking anything off. Boggs to left field curving foul. Three balls, two strikes. In that game in Atlanta, the Mets have added two more runs. They now lead Atlanta nine to five. After seven, as the Mets try for their tenth in a row, we got uh, McDowell in there, the fourth pitcher they've used so far tonight. Dale Murphy has gone out of that game with a gash in his right hand in the third inning. So he, I don't know how long he will be lost to Atlanta. 
Three balls, two strikes. Evans will go. Boggs kind of flails it to left field. Under it and making the catch is Brest, uh, Bradley. And that is all for the Red Sox in the third inning. They get a hit and they leave one. And after three innings of play here, it is nothing, nothing. It is uh, silent movies so far as Mike Moore and Roger Clemens are hammering it out on the mound. Nothing, nothing. And Clemens has faced nine batters, got them all, and six on strikes. Not a bad start, Mr. Montgomery. Well, it isn't, Ned, especially if you're a baseball purist. Of course, you and I kind of like these games a little bit more. Just watch some pitching and not quite so much offense. Although the Red Sox do have a couple of hits, they have not been able to get anybody past second base. Baylor did get there on an infield out. Top of the order up for the Mariners. Owen swung right through that one, foul tipped it. Owen won the count. Three batters here to schedule up were all struck out by Roger, of course, in the first inning. He has struck out six now through his first three innings of work. Baylor in, even with a bag at first. Boggs in front of the bag at third. Strike two. Roger hasn't really played around much with the middle part of the plate. Uh, not only is he striking some people out, he's not doing it just power-wise. He's doing it with a little bit of control mixed in. Had a couple of the strikeouts on some curveballs. The 0-2 quickly to Owen. There's the curveball raked into right field. That's the first Seattle hit. So Spike Owen, Roger's former teammate at the University of Texas. It's the first hit off Roger tonight. Roger may have guessed with him a little bit and said, well, I think he's probably looking for the fastball. He thought throw him something breaking and a good piece of hitting by Owen. You get a clean single into right field on the breaking ball. This one served it down there. I don't know if I'd be willing to change if I had him that far behind my fastball, but <laughs> Roger did, and they have their first hit. Here's the left fielder, Phil Bradley. Roger, of course, will be aware of Owen speed a little bit at first. Red Sox infield, Hoffman and Barrett set a double play depth. Something these Mariners looking for, they have not had as of late. They have not had back to back hits in the last 68 innings now. And have only had two hits in a row in the last 111. Amazing statistic, isn't it? It is incredible. It, it, the one thing about it, you, you, it's not hard to figure out why their record stands at seven and twelve after being five and three at one time. When you don't get back-to-back -back hits, it's well, it's just impossible to score. That's all. Again, Roger with that quick move over to first. No balls, a strike to count to the Seattle left fielder Phil Bradley. to bunt it and gets a little piece of the ball and a lot of Gedman on the foul tip and it's 0-2. Well, I figure that's not a bad idea but the way he's going. You play for a run now, Fenway or not. <laughs> not a bad idea even the way this Mariner club is going if Cotier put the sign on himself, especially when you're facing a Clemens, you know you never have not been scoring very much. What you'd like to do maybe is get something on the board to take a little pressure off your pitchers. Like and not an awful lot. You're not advancing some runners along, that's for sure. Not putting the ball in play. Just outside with the breaking ball is Roger, and it's a one and two count. The last 11 games for the Mariners, they've hit just 137 as a team. Too a little bit. A pretty good runner. Well, he either slipped just a bit coming back there or he gave something away. His ideas looked like they were leaning towards second. Uh huh. Maybe they did give something away. Maybe Getty sniffed it out a little bit too. They go with a pitch out, nothing going two and two. Third 
third base coach. Struck him out. Went right to the inside corner and very hard on the fastball from Roger. And that's number seven. So he says, let's go back to what got me here, and here's the fastball, and try to hit it. And it's right at a good spot to get Bradley out of there. Number seven. First baseman Ken Phelps. Jim Mahoney coaching down at third for the Mariners. Former Red Sox and my former teammate, Darren Johnson. And the hitting instructor, the coach over first. Quick throw there. Owen back in time. Ball just a little bit uh, behind Owen and Baylor, but no advancement. Actually, Jim Mahoney was first signed by the Red Sox, too. He played there at uh, their club in Minneapolis before the, when they were AAA there. Another look over for Owen. He was an infielder, wasn't he? Right. If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Shortstop. Darren Johnson, of course. He was a title for some tape measure jobs in a lot of ballparks, both American and National League. Phelps has that ball thrown right by him by Roger. And it's an 0-1 count. One down in the top of the fourth inning. No score in this one as it's been all pitching. Clements against Mike Moore. talked about Western Division clubs during spring training you certainly had to think about the Seattle Mariners not that they were ready to win over there but ready to give some people some problems and going into series thinking well they can win some games and I'm sure they felt that way and probably still do I believe Monty that they've got enough young talent on this club that they can still make some noise over there and be at least a long shot to contend and, and make it interesting for the folks in Seattle but Presley and Bradley are good players Davis, Alvin Davis. And some good young pitchers. Uh oh, about to throw a little bit off the mark there. And looked like Owen uh, did have an idea of going to second. Either that or Rogers' move just kind of tricked him. Two balls, one strike to count to the Mariner first baseman, Ken Phelps. Hole for him, of course, on that right side to pull into. But I suppose with a pitcher's speed like Clemens, you don't really consider that much of a hole on that side. There is a little respect for Phelps' ability to pull the ball, though. Lyons shades him, oh, maybe four or five steps in the right center field. And again, Roger over to first. I would think that if we were in the National League, or maybe with one or two other umpires in this league tonight, Owen would have already scored. <laughs> Be around on the box. <laughs> on the box, yeah. That's right. That's a very... Close clothesline move that Rogers using. Struck him out. Looked like the hard slider there, and Roger has gone to the snowman. That's number eight. Boy, he is using those corners tonight. He's, he, he'll give away ball two or ball three occasionally. This time, drifting. And that was just right up there around the letters. Try it and see. The one mayor and a hitter who has really slammed the ball off Roger tonight steps in now. Gorman Thomas, the designated hitter. He sent one on a screaming line drive to Rice and left. This is that one all in one. This crowd used to not getting cheers about triples, home runs, and things are getting a treat so far tonight, aren't they? Well, I tell you, Ned, I think they're going to see a lot of this uh, during the course of the year. Certainly, Roger, if he can stay strong, they're going to get it from Hurst. And they should be able to get it from Oil Can Boy. Foul tipped in and out of the glove of Gedman. No balls, two strikes to Thomas. You look at this uh, four man rotation, especially Al Nipper, who says he's not a strikeout man, has had more than his share, though, in his early goings. We know Lala can strike out people. We know that Mike Brown can strike out people. Speaking of that, Mike Brown will figure as John McNamara's number five starter. As that rotation will get going now. The 0 and 2. Just misses the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. 
told you look at this Red Sox pitching staff Jim Mahoney uh, going through a few, I don't know what kind of signs you give other than maybe something to Owen over at first to get your designated hitter off the hook with a stolen base or get caught stealing. One thing for sure Gorman Thomas didn't look down there. Breaking ball misses and it's outside the count Evels at two and two. Look at this uh, re uh, pitching staff Ned may just maybe could reach 550 or 600 strikeouts. I don't know about a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Another quick look by Roger on Owen. You have to give them 150 apiece out of the four of them or oh, average that's terrific there. Yeah, like you that. bet it is. You bet. And none of those fellows much uh, walk anybody. Oh, had an idea and held it up just in time as I asked Tim Welke at first. He said no. So it's a 3-2 count on Thomas. This will give Owen with some speed a head start. Crowd putting the pressure on the umpires right now. They want to see the strikeout. This pitch wasn't far from being a strike. It really wasn't. That's a good high American League strike. Possibly sometime. Would not be in the National League, and Welke says no. That's the six, three, and two count for Roger. Now, Roger, a little cat and mouse game as Baylor will play behind Owen now. They don't choose to hold him on over at first. They figure he's going to go anyway, so they'll. Actually, he's kind of holding him on, but he's just dead behind him. He'll move quicker than usual, though, to defensive set. Popped up right side. Playable for Baylor as he drifts into foul ground now. And as it go off his glove, and that's the play where you mentioned that just doesn't like to make. He's very uncertain on those. He said uh, he says so himself. Seemed to be right there. wasn't that hard, and it just went above his head and healed off his glove. He hasn't played third, uh, first base for about three years. That gives Roger another chance. That's right. <laughs> Boy, there's nobody hates that any worse than Don Baylor does, you can bet. A little meeting between Roger and the, the base runner right now, Spike Owen, as he went back across the middle to go to first. Of course, Spike well on around second on the way to third. So the payoff once again to Gorman Thomas. corner fastball that's number nine for Roger but more importantly he erases the base hit one hit for the Mariners no score and they leave one after three and a half there is no score in this game with the Red Sox and the Mariners here's Buckner he chops it foul toward the first base side Buckner Rice and Baylor to face Mike Moore here no score after three and a half as we go to inning number bottom of the inning number four this may be one of those games, Ned, that both pitchers could go about 12 or 13 innings and have, you have just about the results we got right now. Two hits for Boston and one for Seattle. Buckner out on a fairly sharp hit ball to straightaway center in the first. Tried to get on top of that one, couldn't do it. 0 and 2. By the way, that we told, Ned told you about that hand injury to. Uh, Dale Murphy he, he hurt that making a catch up against the wall in the third inning had to leave the game will be out they report for five or six days which will bring a consecutive game streak for him tonight made uh, his 675th straight start in that Atlanta outfield so that string will come to a halt tonight I don't know if he was going to catch anybody anyway his number that number is 675 a long way away from catching anybody over there. Breaking ball toward the Red Sox dugout and off our camera down in the hole at first base. Watch the merchandise. Buckner. <laughs> Buckner said he'll be glad when it gets about 90 degrees every day. He don't care where he has to go. He was kind of disappointed Sunday that they did not get to play because of the warm weather and felt like that uh, they could win. Hit weakly to Owen. It's short. 
A little bit of a high throw, but Phelps will handle it, and Buckner is out number one. Matter of fact, when you talk to a lot of the Red Sox players, they felt like that they really wanted to play. They felt like they had the upper hand with Roger going against Gubaza. I know the Sunday afternoon. I felt that way. Yeah. Definitely. He wanted that game to be played. They figured that Roger was ready and that uh, they had been struggling. I don't know that Gubaza, for some reason, has never won a game in his major, major league career in April. So they didn't feel like there was any, any reason for that to change. Here's the left fielder, Jim Rice. He was out on a fly ball, a medium deep right in a second. Takes the more breaking ball, strike one. The Red Sox hits a single by Evans in the third, and an infield hit by Don Baylor in the second. Only Baylor got as far as second. Broken bat, looping fly ball. This will be a base hit. Deeper than uh, you might have think on a broken bat. Big turn for Rice at first, and he'll hold up right there. Hit number three for Boston. Ball deep into that gap in the left center field for a broken bat. First baseman Don Baylor will be the hitter. Infield, outfield, straight away for Donnie. Of course, the infield shortens up just a bit to look for a twin killing. Well, oh, these Mariners have done some twin killing too. They have turned 21 double plays. They crowd Donnie off the plate inside, one and one. They lose some pretty good numbers against these Mariners in his career, 266. He's hit 21 home runs against them. Last year had three of those against the Mariners. Oh boy, he looked like he was looking for the breaking ball and got it and just fouled it off. A ball and two strikes. Kind of odd. The Red Sox have three hitters against these Mariners, all with 21. Baylor, Rice, and Armas. All with identical home run marks against Seattle. All of them right-handed, too. You think that has something to do with that park in Seattle? Maybe. They crowd him again. Something to do with this park, too, here, maybe. Yeah, with the exception of Baylor, you're absolutely right. I'm sure it does. Two balls, two strikes to Baylor. Oops. Just by speed alone, as Moore comes over to first, you can't drift too far off that bag. If you ever got all that couple up with a good move, you wouldn't be able to step off the bag at all. Baylor fouls a high pitch away, and the count will hold at two and two. Mariners and the Red Sox traded numbers last year. The Mariners won four in Fenway, while the Red Sox could manage two, and they just turned those numbers around out in the kingdom. On the hands, foul. Presley couldn't quite reach it down that third baseline. Would not have mattered anyway. Taylor ought to get bats that are about as thick at the end, uh, the where he holds the bat as it is at the business end. The way they eat him up inside of those pitches all the time. Get a little more thickness in there. Well, they definitely try to work him inside. There's no question about that. If nothing else, it's hard for him to hit that ball fair, as we have seen many times already in this short season. And they just go completely across the plate there, and it's a full count to Baylor. Doubtful whether Rice would go here or not uh, with that leg bothering him, but uh, he could very well be sent. Really, really hampered him around on Friday night in Kansas City. Didn't seem to be quite as bad on Saturday. Maybe Baylor wants to check on that himself. Not Baylor, Moore, excuse me. Rice goes. It's swinging a miss. Here's the throw by Jaeger. Plenty of time, and it's a strikeout 
two four on the double play. So the Red Sox do not score in the fourth inning. They get a hit. They leave no one. And as we go to inning number five on this Tuesday night, no score after four. Here's a look at the strike them out, throw them out. Rice, of course, as we mentioned, with a little bit of a hobble in that leg. And a good nasty pitch here once again. That hard slider from Moore and Jaeger with a lot of time to come out of there and fire. Of course, Rice not trying to steal the base. They're trying to stay out of the double play. And he is out by a long ways. Strikeout number three for Moore on that one. That's the 22nd double play turn by the Mariners this year. And then I'll just, Will, we'll just go back to you. we we'll watch Roger and Gedman play catch for a little while longer if you want to. I'd say Roger's fairly strong tonight, wouldn't you? <laughs> maybe, maybe those two days uh, more he got on to his uh, start, uh, two more days of rest have really been something for him. One thing, right after that first inning, he was a little high in that first inning, and uh, although he had some 3-2 counts, did strike out the side, which he did also in the fourth after giving up a hit. But he's kind of gotten himself right down in that slot now in those in-between innings. He went out and threw about oh five to seven minutes in the rain in Kansas City after the game was called and uh, figured to get his throwing in but he really didn't work an awful lot then. So he is hyper tonight he is fan nine he has given up one hit through four innings. He faces Jim Presley. One ball no strikes to the third baseman Presley went down swinging in the second he was number four. No breeze right now. It's not a factor. Drops the breaking pitch over for a strike. One ball, one strike. And without that wind coming in, it's a little bit warmer than it was really uh, at the opening of the game. There's two of them. Went for the high pitch, tried to hold it back, and went to one knee. Now this is what happens when you're trying to catch up to a fastball you realize you're a little bit behind you get yourself a little bit too anxious because you're trying to get out in front and catch up to it you make yourself swing at some bad pitches especially that fastball up one two delivery fouled off breaking ball that time fouled up the screen a ball and two strikes. Kind of overthrew the breaking ball that time for ball two, two and two. Roger fanned the side in the first, got two strikeouts in the second, one in the third, and three more in the fourth. And one in the fifth so far. That's number 10. So it goes on. Bonus time has come early here for the Red Sox and the Jimmy Fun tonight is Roger Clemens has pumped up 10. That gets you right over the bonus hump there. And then, boy, it's just like, well, it's pay care. It's, it's a cakewalk from here on out. $1,500 right now. Yes, sir. All sponsored by the Polaroid Corporation. There is Calderon for strike one. He was called out on strikes in the second. Six times now in his career has Roger fanned 10 or more. And five of them have been at Fenway. Most recently was uh, against the Tigers, April 22nd this year. He struck out 10. Foul strike two. He's ahead of Calderon, nothing in two. And this crowd is getting turned on. They're small, but they're mighty when he gets two strikes on somebody. for not liking it. The, the big thing that we mentioned a couple of times, not only is he getting the strikeouts, he's not necessarily doing it power-wise. He's doing it with just little bitty pieces of the plate. Now he's been hit and he'll go out right here. Only about a half of that ball is on the plate. Cardable, strike one. Cardable grounded out to second base to achieve a notoriety of some sort. At least he made contact with the ball in the third inning. Strike two. What a show he's putting on now. Crowd yelling again for him.
Edmond was going to put himself out there anyway and just dare Tartable to reach. He would have had to reach across the plate for it. And what is impressive is the fact that most power pitchers will try to go down the middle. He's using the corners. Ball two. And he's using very, as you mentioned, very little of the plate on each side, but willing to throw. Okay, ball two, but I still have this thing that I can throw for strike three. Well, you know what? He's still pitching. He's not just winding yeah. up throwing the ball. He's just... <laughs> Right now, unhittable. 2 2 pitch. Strike three. Clemens gets the side. He has now struck out 12 through five innings. One, two, three, they go. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. No score. Side part of the plate there to Mr. Tarnabo. Knew it too. That umpire's been busy. Uh, Mr. Uh, Voltaggio had that right hand. He may have to go get a rub down on that before this game's over. Certainly he'll need one after it. Meanwhile, the cosmetics have been applied by Clemens with the 12 strikeouts, but his opposite number, Mike Moore, has given up three hits and also no runs where it counts. He has struck out three along the way. His last one resulted in a double play in the fourth inning. So he has done his job, too. And we've got a nothing-nothing corker going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Rich Gedman up. Gedman grounded to second base in the second inning. Ball one. Moore has been using breaking stuff to advantage. Neither pitcher has walked a batter tonight. 2 0 count to Rich. with a hard enough single so that Calderon and Wright could play it nicely off the carom and throw him out at second base. Shortstop Spike Owen taking the throw. Well, there's not much way you can hit a ball any harder than this. We've seen Gedman really waylay on some pitches this year. There's just one more of them. He really gets right on top of that ball. And really, the ball is hit so hard, you would figure that he may not have a chance to go to second anyway, and boy, did he not. Calderon with a good play there for a visiting player. Mm. Take it nicely, perfectly off the boards there, and that overhand throw on one hop to get Gedman, and uh, Getty had no chance. So it's a single wasted. One ball, no strikes. Barrett with a count of one ball no strikes Marty flied deep to center field in the second inning coming close to the wall but Henderson went back on the track there's a strike on Marty one ball one strike the Red Sox now have four hits in the game but a couple of them have been erased one on the Strike out into a double play, and this one with uh, outstretching, out trying to stretch for Gedman. One ball, one strike to Marty Barrett. Nothing, nothing. Bottom of the fifth and a dandy. Just outside. Two balls, one strike. I'll assure you, Ned, there are 18 players. Actually, make that 20 since we have the DH. 20 players are excited about playing in this kind of game because you got to stay on yeah. your toes. You know you want to make that good play when you have an opportunity to make it, just like Calderon did there. Certainly, your pitch and catcher are interested. Ball four, and there's the first walk given up by either pitcher. Barrett walks with one out. Right now, that makes that throw by Calderon look pretty important. We'll see. 
Steve Lyons fly to center field in the third inning. No runs, one hit for Seattle. No runs, three hits, and one error for the Red Sox. Twelve strikeouts so far for Roger Clemens, if you just joined us. He has fanned the last six in a row, which ties an all-time Red Sox record for consecutive strikeouts in a game. Ray Culp has one of them, and Buck O'Brien did it a long time ago. Culp did it in 1970. Brian did it in 1913 at Washington, Old Griffith Stadium, and Bray Culp did it on the 11th of May. And Roger has done it here tonight so far, six going and uh, a possibility of seven. That was at California where Culp did it. Lions up with a count of one ball, no strikes. They're playing in New York now. Minnesota got two home runs in the second inning to lead Gidry and the Yankees two to nothing. Tim Laudner and Lombardazzo hit back to back home runs. Lombardazzo with his uh, first major league career home run off Gidry. But after Laudner hit one. 1 0 to Lions. Two and nothing to Steve. I'll get a phone call somewhere after the game tonight, boy. You'll be talking about that to parents or family or somewhere. Not many guys break in with that first and off. Somebody like Gidry. Off Lightning. That's right. Yeah. Two balls, no strikes to Lions. Carved foul out of play. Two and one. Toronto leading California three to one after three at Toronto. Joyner is home for the Angels. McCaskill against Steve. Baltimore nothing. The White Sox nothing in the third. At Chicago. Royals one. Detroit one after four at Detroit. Dennis Leonard in that one against Frank Tanana. Two one to Lions and the throw another hard throw over to first base by Moore. Joe Carter of Cleveland has hit a home run in the first inning, his fourth of the year. And Cleveland has at least a 1 0 lead over Texas down in Arlington. Fly ball, well hit to center field. Henderson back, still back and there at 379 with the catch. And Barrett back to first as Lyons gives it a ride, but nobody can get it to either side. They've been making the long shots to center field here. It's kind of a pretty play you like to see the outfielder make. Now, the crack of the bat, he puts his head down like Henderson does here. Just puts his head down. He, he's got to guess, anticipate about where that ball is going to go. He knows it's hit hard. Then he'll just look up when he figures he's just about right. And boy, that's right where Henderson is. He took it right into that corner. Makes it look easy that way, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Of course, he's going to run faster for one thing with not trying to watch the ball those first four or five steps. Glenn Hoffman struck out his first time up and fouls this one off strike one. Well, he got a couple of people on that one I believe. He did get the umpire Voltaggio certainly. And maybe Yeager. It's a strike to Hoffman. Strike two. Cincinnati one, Montreal nothing, but Montreal's piled up some runs in the fourth inning. Andre Dawson has hit his sixth home run. Hubie Brooks one right after that for his home run, his fifth. Tim Wallach, his third. Fitzgerald, his second, all in the same inning. So Montreal has gone ahead of Cincinnati. Knocked out Soto, brought Price in. Zane Smith going for Montreal. A ball and two strikes to Glenn Hoffman. Bryn Smith, that is. There are Bryn, Lee Smith, Zane Smith, and Bryn Smith all over the place, and all pitchers 
That's right. <laughs> two and two. Well, I'll tell you, the only way I can remember him, because I, I got wound up in that thing the other day, is Zane pitches for Atlanta, and he's closer to the West. <laughs> and it reminds me of Zane Gray, so that's how I remember and That's good, a thought association <laughs> right there. Uh, best I can do. Another bullet over to first base by Moore. Well, Phelps going to have to wonder if he's got the right kind of glove on over there in a minute. <laughs> Len Hoffman with a count of two and two and two out. Cracks it foul again. Count hangs that way. Down to the left side, Presley with it, and over to second to Tartable for the out. The force is made, and the inning is over. And the Red Sox get a hit and a walk, but they leave one. And after five innings, it is still nothing, nothing. Well, we're to the top of the sixth inning in a rapidly moving affair at Fenway, and this man is one of the names, is the name, along with his opposite number, Mike Moore. Roger Clemens has struck out 12 so far. The last Red Sox player to strike out 12 in a game was Oil Can Boyd. He did it in consecutive starts last April and May. Clemens high is 15. He struck out the 15 Kansas City Royals. He has fanned 12 through five innings and he's struck out the last six men to face him. So we'll watch this rather carefully. Almost lost in the shuffle is Mike Moore who's pitching a heck of a ball game. He has struck out only three. He's given up four hits, but he has given up no runs. Might be one pitch make the difference in this ball game tonight, Mr. Could, Martin. Could be. I wonder. I'm thinking of Dave Henderson a lot. <laughs> this ball club. I hate to think that. Well, because he's, he's leading up, off. You mean <laughs> he's broken up a couple with late inning home runs here. One a one nothing game, I believe. And Dave Henderson is up right now. He took a third strike in the third inning. He was number six for Clemens. Actually, all of them can just about take a number now somewhere along the line. Everybody, <laughs> just about except Yeager. We, he's only been up once. Strike one. The crowd getting fired up. One ball, one strike. Well, I can talk to my Dr. K if they want to, but tonight, I don't know. He wouldn't be any better. He might be even. Yeah. Ball two, a little bit high. Ball two and strike one. Well, one thing, the guy that hangs up all the Ks here, no matter whether he sits and in the bleachers or down left field, he is really, really going to hate himself tomorrow. Missed the boat. He tonight. is not here tonight. Strike two. It is two and two to Dave Henderson. Got him. Thirteen and a new Red Sox record. That's 13 in the game and seven straight strikeouts for Roger Clemens setting a Red Sox mark for consecutive batters struck out in a game. This is just about as pretty as you'd want to make it. Here is Steve Yeager. He plied to center field his first time up. Strike one there. So he is the only one that Roger has not fanned so far. I don't know about you, but every strike he throws sending cold chills down my spine. Strike two. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> and you know, usually a rhythm pitcher is somebody who's kind of a finesse pitcher, but he's got a rhythm tonight. Yes, along with it. One ball, two strikes. Did he get him? No. First base umpire Tim Welke says no. 
and is two and two. I don't know what game he's watching. That's got to be a swing there. Looked like he went around. Oh my goodness. Give him the benefit of the doubt if nothing else. Strike three. Number 14. Now he's gotten everybody in the lineup. Oh, he is just immense out there. Everybody up. Dagger knew it too. What anything he could do? He knew where the pitch was, knew what it was, just couldn't do anything about it. Eight strikeouts in a row. The last time that that was uh, equaled was Ron Davis. Tom Seaver has ten in a row. Nolan Ryan did eight twice or nine twice. Strike. One ball, one strike to Spike Owens, who has struck out, and he has the only Mariner hit. He singled sharply to right field on a breaking pitch in the fourth inning after two strikes were on him. And he hits another one hard. Way back goes Lions. Got it. And a one, two, three inning for Roger Clemens. Gets a tremendous hand as he goes off the field. As he has fanned 14 through six innings. And we move to the bottom of the six. Nothing to nothing. This is the way it is in the bottom of the sixth inning. And this only tells part of the story. The other part, a third of it, one hit for Seattle. And the biggest part, 14 strikeouts for Roger Clemens through six innings. Dwight Evans up. And Mike Moore. There, there's a ball behind Tartable. And Evans gets a life. Danny Tartable muffs one with the, took a quick hop on him as Evans gets on on the error. So the Red Sox have the lead man on in an inning. Ball was tailing in a little bit, hit it hard, but right at Tartable, and Danny just uh, missed it, went behind him, couldn't find it, and it's an error to the second baseman. A very important runner, well, everybody gets on in this game is very important, is Dwight Evans in a nothing-nothing game, and Mike Moore pitching a fine game in his own right has held the Red Sox scoreless. He has fanned three. He has walked but one. Wade Boggs is up. He's 0 for 2. They look for the bunt on the third base side. Takes ball one. Presley way in on the grass on the third base side. And Boggs checking with Renee Latchman at third. It's low for a ball. The count is one ball, one strike to Boggs. One ball, one strike to Wade. It's the kind of game we figure it's tough for any pitcher to lose. The way they've been, they've been pitching different types of games. But accomplishing the same end, holding the other team scoreless. Presley in still at third, but not as far. Runner breaks a throw down to second base, and he is out of there. Danny Tartable puts the throw on the second time that Jaeger, with that little quick sidearm throw, has nailed a runner. Now, whether a sign was missed or whether it was just had to be a, a hit and run situation, and Boggs did not offer. I think you're absolutely right, Mr. Martin. I see some awful frowning looking faces. One from Evans, the first, and then back to McNamara. On that hit and run, as we've said so many times, that base runner not trying to actually steal the base, so you're not really uh, trying to get that big jump. Trying to get him uh, down there, but Boggs up there. 3 1 to Wade, and there is 3 and 2. So the Red Sox miss another opportunity. They've had two runners thrown out. One runner thrown out from the outfield trying to stretch a single to a double. 
The other two thrown out by Yeager behind the plate. A walk to Boggs, and wouldn't you know that? Second walk given up by Moore. One out, one on. Mike Moore working in the telephone booth that is Fenway Park when you're in a nothing nothing game. Buckner has gone over two. He has fly to center and grounded to shortstop. Ball one. Pressure may be a little bit more on Moore uh, tonight, Ned, than it would be on Clemens. Uh, Moore knows that his team has not been scoring a lot of runs. He's watched 13, 14 of his teammates go down swing tonight. He may figure that one run is going to be the difference in a game. So you start maybe as a pitcher trying to get a little finer, and that's when you're apt to make that mistake. Boggs just getting back. He had enough of a lead where he knew he could get back standing up. One more step and he could get back maybe with a dive. One ball, no strikes. And a good strike thrown across the outside corner to Buckner. One ball, one strike to Billy Buckner in a nothing nothing game, bottom of the sixth. Something right at the la at the end of the signs from Jaeger there the little after he'd given the wiggle of sign a little thumb flip that was a sign from Moore to just come there it is again come set and take a good throw over to first hit off the hands by Buckner and he'll need another bat after that one right at the thumbnails and fingernails and bat count is one ball and two strikes now to Buck. Use that little thumb flip with your catchers a lot here. We use it for a while. As a catcher, if I wanted to find out something, if the base runner maybe give me something away, and certainly this ball game, a stolen base may be the difference. Stolen base right. and a base hit, uh, you may have your ball game. So in order in order to find out something, maybe you wanted your pitcher to come set and give you a good move over to first, not just a move, a very good move. Sometimes that base runner would give you something away and give you a little bit of an advantage. No flip this time. Pitch to the plate is in order. Buckner goes to left field fairly deep and is off the wall. Boggs goes to third. Buckner goes to second. Runners at second and third. A line drive to left field. Bradley tried for it with a leap and went over his head off the scoreboard. The point I think Bradley could have caught had he stayed with it. He just really misplayed the ball, not being that familiar with left field and the wall here. He's going to stop it and jump too quick. He could have gone another two steps maybe to get to that ball. He's not sure exactly if he's run out of room or what kind of room he's got left. Ball, it would have been reachable for him had he gotten back there. Easy for Boggs to go to third. Of course, Buckner with the double. And Phil Regan, the pitching coach to the mound. <laughs> Buckner's seventh double and Jim Rice will be the batter. Now they have to decide what they want to do with Rice up there with one out. Baylor on deck. How they want to do it. With all of a sudden the Red Sox have created a situation here which Moore has not been in before. With runners at second and third. And, and Yeager looking toward the dugout will crouch behind the plate. Infield in all the way around. Runners at second and third. One out. Grounded a shortstop, and the runners will have to hold. Rice is out. And now there are two away. And there's a big break for Moore as the infielders can move back now. Jim Rice grounds to short on the first pitch. Now, Don Baylor is the hitter. Moore doing a nice job that time after giving up the well, there's an error on what uh, should have been out number one on Tarnables, and they got him anyway as Evans was caught down at second base. A walk to Boggs, then the wall double by Buckner, which, as Monty pointed out, 
Might have been caught out there by Bradley. Here's Baylor. Carves the thin side pitch into the crowd on the third base dugout side. Baylor has had an infield hit and struck out into a double play. He struck out on a breaking pitch. And the runner at first base, Wright, Rice, was caught going to second. Another one. This time he has zeroed in the dugout and went a little farther. Not quite so much foul as the first one, but hit harder. Nothing in two. Manager Chuck caught here. He's, he's protected. He's going to get right behind that screen there. <laughs> So now Baylor is down on the count, nothing in two. Runners at second and third. Struck him out. Dropped down through in the breaking pitch. And the Red Sox chances go by the boards in the sixth inning. They do not score. They leave two big ones. And after six, it's nothing, nothing. Well, oh, I'll say there's a doubleheader. Mr. Niehaus, the gentleman on the left, and the right-hander, the man on the right hand, I'd like to welcome him back to Boston. That's Mr. Ken Brett, who he and I were, that was my first roommate in the big leagues, right. by the way. I remember that. He, yeah. he, as a matter of fact, he was greeting to me today. He said, uh, who would ever thought that back in 1970, you and I as roommates would bound up be behind a microphone some 12 years later or so. And neither <laughs> one of you would have won any money on the bet like no. that. No, no, guaranteed. Well, I tell you, after six innings, it's nothing, nothing here. They're having some people evicting people who are going out on the field now. As uh, these guys look at what is happening here, you can tell the Mariners strikeouts, 14 of them for Roger Clemens, in an exciting baseball game at Fenway Park, and some of the clowns are out on the field now and being taken care of. But it is almost a celebration time, and Marty, for the, usually at Fenway Park, the excitement builds when the Red Sox come up in the bottom of an inning. Now <laughs> it is building into the top of every inning. Well, you are so right, especially tonight. These fans are right on Rogers' side all the way, and they have been actually right from first strikeout. Uh, Ned, the count went to three and two on Owen, and then he proceeded to strike out the side. It's just gotten better as the night has gone along. Two times this young man has struck out. Here's the left fielder Phil Bradley in the seventh. You know, another, I was thinking about this a moment ago after the three two count to Owen as he let off. He had a couple of foul balls uh, in his count. But since then they have not been that many foul balls on Roger. He has just been coming right after hitters and getting them. Needless to say he's been getting them as he has struck out 14 two-thirds of his way to number 15 his career high no balls two strikes to count to Bradley no score in this one as yet and as you keep mentioning that and very rightfully so a good bit of pitching by Mike Moore especially good pitching by him in that sixth inning Rice maybe a little over anxious helped him out a little bit with second and third strike three number 15 for Clemens he's tied his career high Well, you just uh, maybe tape the first, second, or first a couple of batters in this game, and you can play it again. This is it again. Uh oh. Just high heat. Oh. I looked up quickly to see Roger headed toward the Red Sox dugout without any indication of anything. As far as arm was concerned, all he wanted was a tongue depressor, though, to clean out his shoes. Don't give me that again. Oh. <laughs> well, you're talking about all those chills I had go down my spine and those strikeouts. Here you are for the Red Sox strikeouts. Mambo did it in uh, in Washington in a, in a night game. I think it was an extra innings. You were, were you there for that game? Yeah. Must have been. Yeah, I was. It was 61. I think he put a few curveballs on them boys. He would have done it a little hop, a little different than I think Roger would have done it tonight, although Mambo had a pretty good fastball. No, I don't think it was extra. He just did it. That was a night record at one time. Ken Phelps. He is 0 for 2. Both times he's been up there, he has struck out. Baylor hugging the line at first. Boggs a bit off the line at third for the Seattle first baseman. A 
out of play. The ball goes one way, the bat the other. No balls, two strikes the count to Phelps. The left-hander is Guterman, number 36 there, and the right-hander, of course, you might remember, Peter Lallin, former Bigfoot is right. Bigfoot, really Bigfoot. Peter Lallin, formerly with the Milwaukee Brewers. Guterman can really throw hard, so can Lallin. Here's the 0-2. Laid off the high pitch, one ball, two strikes. Mariners do have Nunez back on their roster tonight. He has been on the disabled list. Check the swing. Just foul it away. Ned mentioned earlier with the strikeout to Jaeger back in the sixth. No Seattle batter has escaped Rogers' strikeout mark tonight. And as you can imagine, a lot of them have gone down twice. Breaking ball and a good one, but just a bit low, and it's three and two now to Phelps. Roger, through uh, six innings, had thrown 92 pitches, 60 of them for strikes. <laughs> Seems hardly enough. <laughs> it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good <laughs> average there. He'd have to throw about that many strikes to strike out as many as he's got. It's two and two, not three and two. Struck him out. On the foul tip, that's number 16 for Roger. I thought the count was two and two, but I wasn't going to argue, and I was correct. At any rate, it winds up two and three. Here it comes on the 2-2 pitch. Just mad, nasty pitch. Breaking down and away. From a left-handed batter. Designated hitter, Gorman Thomas. Big swing and a miss, strike one. That Mambo Kett game was indeed in Washington, and it was 17, and he did it in nine innings. He beat Washington, by the way, two to one. I'd like that, to know how Washington got a point. That was on the tail end of a, of a uh, double play. 19-game road trip that we went on. <laughs> <laughs> Fastball just a bit high. That was my first long road trip in 61. They went to uh, Detroit and Cleveland, and Jackie Jensen jumped the club. They went to Kansas City, Minnesota, L.A., and then back to Washington before coming home. Five hits for Boston, one for Seattle. No score, and it's one and two to Thomas. You have to think, too, that these Mariner hitters know that they've struck out a lot. And these people at Fenway are all standing. Ooh. Fly ball, straight away, center field, deep. Lions right at the grill work. It's a home run. Ooh. Right up over the grill work for Gorman Thomas. It's 1-0 Seattle. That's number five for the big designated hitter. Boy, that's what you think sometimes in this ballpark, in any ballpark, when you have a game like this. One thing like that can ruin a whole night for somebody. And he's the kind of guy that can put a game away. With one swing of the bat. That's only the second Mariner hit. Ball out over the plate where he could extend on it. And he delivered a tie. Lions for a minute thought he could have it. But it just kept going. He went as far back as he could. Oh, and one count to Bradley following that. You know, Ned, what had happened is I look up quickly at the flag. Although I don't know if that would have made a difference. It certainly would have been a hit. Certainly was going to be high off the wall. But that flag now blowing toward the center field area. Strike two to Bradley. Or right, make that uh, Presley, excuse me. Wow. 
Roger maybe thinking a little bit about that pitch to Thomas as he backed off the mound and took more time right there tonight than he has, I think, between any of his pitches. The 0 and 2. We're on the right side. Baylor will feed on to Clements covering first, and the Mariners are retired, but they break the ice in this real pitching duel here tonight. After two strikeouts, the two out homer by Gorman Thomas, and at the end of six and a half, that's the score. One nothing Seattle. Well, as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, the Seattle Mariners coming up with that run on the home run by Gorman Thomas. But when you look at it this way, Ned, you figure your team had to score a run to win anyway. So now instead of winning, they just have to come something to get a little bit even with the Seattle Mariners. Well, like Moore had shot a couple of times and uh, Moore did a, an excellent job in the sixth inning on something that was not entirely his fault getting the paper where they were. Certainly didn't do that. Uh, the error committed by Tartabo. There's the difference in that flag as we started here tonight. That flag blowing right in our face here behind home plate. And now it's blowing in our back straight to center. In the seventh, Gedman, Barrett, and Lyons, the scheduled hitters against Mike Moore. Popped it up left side in foul ground. Jim Presley with a lot of room. Jaeger gives way to Presley at the last second. And Gedman is out number one. One pitch, one out. Mike Moore has had the Red Sox on base in each of the last five innings. He gave up hits in the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. He walked Red Sox batters in the fifth and in the sixth. But the Red Sox have not been able to do anything about it. And Barrett had a long drive to left center his first time up that looked like it might do some work. That was with after Baylor had gotten to second on an infield hit and a ground out, but Dave Henderson ran that one down. That prevented the Red Sox from scoring. Marty 0 for 2. Tough pitch by Moore running an outside corner 0 and 1. I said Marty's 0 for 2. Excuse me, he's 0 for 1. He walked in the fifth. Reaches for the breaking ball, fouls it away. 0 and 2 the count. Red Sox with a nine and eight record tied for second with two other clubs in this American League East two and a half games behind the Yankees who are getting beat right now by the way by a score of four to three to Owen it's short a real grass cutter there he throws Barrett out and that's two down Marty by the way has not struck out yet in this 1986 season. covered 65 plate appearances now as a matter of fact struck out just once every 11.5 or 11.8 times something like that last year so Marty well and above running over that record here's center fielder Steve Lyons looks to bunt and takes the breaking ball off the plate outside one ball no strikes double barrel action in the Red Sox bullpen Sammy Stewart and Tim Lawler actually it's, they're just probably getting some thrown in because they're by they're past Stewart's point in the game to the left side and through the hole Lions just saw the big gap over there seemed like he just took that pitch and steered it right through there he'll have the sixth Red Sox hit he's one for three so something running with a couple down here in the seventh Steve was looking to the left side when he bluffed the bunt the last time up looking for a little hole somewhere then he found the hole by swinging away kind of inside out of it really and got it into the big hole between the third and shortstop third baseman and shortstop. So with two out now a little speed on with Lions at first that'll bring up Glenn Hoffman the shortstop. Hoffy has struck out that back in the third inning and he bounced into a five four fielders choice that ended the fifth. Got to watch Lions now. Infield, fanned out, Presley right on that line at third. Line with a bluff from a couple extra steps on his lead. Hoffman takes it outside, ball one. The Seattle outfield, straight away, very deep. 
and they are sitting in a position they'll of course try to cut off a gap or keep anything from being hit over the head that might allow Lions to score. Moore going to try to take a step from that lead right there. Pitching seems to be rather in vogue tonight, uh, Ned. Some close scores going on. Baltimore one to nothing over Chicago after five and a half. McGregor against Nelson. It's two to one. Detroit over Kansas City after seven. Tanana against Leonard. One to one after two and a half at Milwaukee and Oakland. Cotterelli against Wegman. So scores are fairly low. It's one to nothing here. Ah, watch out, Hoffy. Ball looked like it might have just bent right around Hoffman's front leg. Look for a minute as if he was hit by it. <laughs> well, you could take one for the club at this point. And he just kind of danced away and almost grazed his uniform. Roll it back in time. 3 0 oh to Glenn. They've got a dandy going in Toronto. California Toronto tied at three after five. Joyner has hit his sixth home run of the year for the California Angels. That was a solo homer in the fourth inning. McCaskill against Steve in that one. Ball four to Hoffies. He walks on four pitches. That'll move Lions up to second in scoring position, representing the tying run. And that'll bring up Dwight Evans. The third walk issued by Moore tonight. Ed Romero has come out to run for Glenn Hoffman. Ed Romero has been the starting Red Sox shortstop for the last 15 games. And done a very good job of it, too. He has indeed. As a matter of fact, Ned, the last game he played, we might remember, he hit a couple of balls hard that Brett actually robbed him of two base hits. He could have been two for three in that game or two for four, but as it wound up, uh, it didn't work out that way. Double barrel action now in the Toronto on the uh, Seattle bullpen. That is um, uh, Matt Young and Best. Carl Best is the right-hander. This, uh, this Seattle ball club can throw some heat at you out of that bullpen, I will assure you. So two, two on, two outs for Evans. He looks one over, a bit low, ball one. Matt Young just demoted to the Seattle bullpen. He was sent down there today, as a matter of fact. A little pitching change in the rotation for this series here in Boston. Billy Swift will pitch on Wednesday, or excuse me, Thursday in this series, taking Young's place. Drive deep to left center field. This ball is deep, deep, gone. It's a home run. Three run homer for Evans. The Red Sox lead 3-1. a double on this had to keep watching and then he knew I've got the whole thing Boston takes the lead it's 3 1 and Boggs has a strike on him as Evans will circle the bases number two for Dwight Boggs 0 for 2 in the night well, man, that's one of the few times and I mean very few times that Evans has seen a fastball on the first pitch to him in a sequence of pitches. A lot of pitches have been getting a lot of breaking balls and off-speed stuff. 
Maybe the first one he's seen since Jack Morris on opening day. <laughs> I don't know. He hasn't seen. He certainly hasn't seen many. One ball, two strikes. The count away. They shift him around the left, of course. And he sends it that way. But it should be catchable for Bradley as he makes the wrong turn and then finally winds up with the catch. But the Red Sox take the lead. The big three-run homer by Dwight Evans, his second of the year as we go to inning number eight on this real pitcher's night. And it's still a pitcher's night. The Red Sox lead 3-1. One change for the Red Sox as we go to the eighth inning. We'll make that two changes, actually. One is that Ed Romero will be at shortstop in place of Glenn Hoffman, who he pinch ran for. And secondly, Roger Clemens has a, a three to one lead, which he didn't go to into the seventh win. Boy, they changed that around in a hurry as uh, the bottom of the order really started it with two out. A single by Lyons and a walk to Hoffman. There are the K's out in right field. All of a sudden, they appeared. Guy must have been listening or watching uh, something and got here. <laughs> Boy, he got strung up there in a hurry. He All wasn't right. here in the fifth when he got his tenth because I looked again then. So, <laughs> well, he's got 16 now and he is within a shot of a major league record. He's 19. Strike one to the first batter Calderon, who has fanned twice. Top of the eighth inning, Red Sox lead three to one. Calderon has been called out twice on strikes. Is that record held by a couple of people at 19? I think Carlton has uh, 19. Keith Carlton and uh, somebody else. I know Nolan Ryan. Ryan's got 19 because I watched Ryan. him do it. Joe Stambito and Rob Stanley, they're the late inning guys and they're up in the bullpen. Nothing in two. Nothing in three. Seventeen. And Calderon was just completely lost out there. He was flailing away regardless of where it was. He has tied the Red Sox record for Mambo Kett, which he did in 1961. There is... Ball one to Tarnable. Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan, and Steve Carlton all have 19. Back it goes for a foul. I think that 18 is the American League record held by Bob Feller. No, I, well, I don't know. I can't be sure, but I think I saw Nolan Ryan strike out 19 of us. Oh, no, that, was, that, was, that was when he was in the American League. Yeah. That's right, with California. Yeah. yeah. The other two were national. There's a drive to the gap in right center field, covered by Lyons in a hurry. And Tartable is on with his first hit. And the third hit for the Mariners. Well, the young man has proved all along uh, coming into this series here that he's got a little punch. He finally catches up with a Clemens fastball, which a lot of Mariners have not been able to do tonight, although he didn't pull it. Gets it in the right center toward the gap, cut off nicely by Lyons, and he'll keep the force play in order. So here we go with one out in the eighth inning. And Dave Henderson is up. The pitch. Strike one. Henderson called out on strikes in the third. Went down swinging in the sixth. He was number six and number 13. 17 strikeouts for Roger Clemens if you just joined us. We're in the eighth inning. Now he's ahead of Henderson, nothing in two. And the crowd up again. Foul ball out of play. He'll have another shot. And you start thinking about records now, he's within two. Incidentally, Steve Carlton, show how his luck ran, he struck out 19 and lost the game. <laughs> Al Cowens has come out on deck. With Henderson up there, and Cowens, if he gets a chance, if there's no double play here, will bat 
for Yeager. A ball that sounded high. A fastball up and in. One ball, two strikes. Knocked him down a little bit. Two and two. Roger pressing maybe a little on that pitch. That's just looked like maybe an overthrow there. And they're a little yeah. anxious to get it. Maybe trying to throw a little bit harder. I wish you wouldn't do that. <laughs> just stay within <laughs> yourself, Roger. It's worked so far. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Strike three. 18. Never has there been this excitement in the last couple of years here. And it's not a sellout crowd by any means, but they're making sellout noises. Red Sox record for strikeouts in a game. Al Cowens is going to bat for Steve Yeager. There's your mark on the scoreboard. Cowens usually gets the bat on the ball, but I would think this would be a terrible time to come up as a pinch hitter, wouldn't you? Well, one thing, when a manager calls your name, you wouldn't run up there that bat rack to grab a bat. You'd go walking up there with a, a very soft, very soft uh, gait. <laughs> All right, Al Cowens up there. The runner at first base is Tarnable. Ball one. Breaking pitch for a strike. Roger has struck out 30 batters now in two consecutive games. And that's a major league record. Fly ball, center field straight away, and Lyons is there. So that ends the eighth inning. He still has a shot at it. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Red Sox leading 3-1. to one. We have a new catcher for the Mariners as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Bob Kearney has come on to catch the slants of Mike Moore, who in his own right has pitched a fine ball game, made one mistake, a three-run homer to Dwight Evans in the seventh inning to make it three to one. The attendance tonight in on this almost historic occasion, we don't know yet, 13,000. 414. 13 414. Boy, and they'll remember this one. He, if he does break or tie that record, that in 10 years there'll be 30,000 people here. Minimum. <laughs> Bill Buckner is up. There is a strike. Buck has a double tonight, a double off the wall in the sixth inning. They did not score in that inning. They scored in the seventh after two were out. A single by Lyons, a walk to Hoffman, and a home run by Evans. And that's been the bad inning, really, for Moore. Red Sox had opportunities in the fifth and sixth, but they were squelched. One ball, one strike. Ripped into right field. Base hit. Bill Buckner with a good smooth stroke that time. Singles sharply to right for his second hit. Certainly starting to see a little bit more of the kind of swing that you expect to see from Buckner, Ned. Uh, the last couple of days he homered out in that series in Kansas City. He's been working a little extra hard. Even though that elbow is bothering him to throw, it's not bothering him that much to hit. As evidence tonight, that double and then the single here. That ball scorts pretty good by Buck there to right field. Yeah, he was saying, I, I don't mind this DH too much every once in a while. Kind of nice to watch a game and get ready. Sort of fun. Well, he's had fun the last couple of days. One in Kansas City and so far tonight. Here's Jim Rice. Ball on the ball aimed a little bit by Moore that time and blocked by Kearney. 
Well, Buck might say that he kind of likes that DH once in a while, but I don't know uh, if I'd try to tie a rope and keep him out no, from playing. <laughs> you couldn't. <laughs> He'd find a way to break it somewhere. Jim Rice has one hit in three times. They take off Buckner, the ground ball to shortstop, and because Buckner was taking off, he gets to second. Rice grounds out, Owen over to Phelps. But Buck, who is moving, gets to second base. Well, you may have noticed a little handshake there for Jimmy in the dugout. He didn't put a great swing on it, but he did what they asked him to do. Buck well, maybe uh -oh. jam knee in the second when he went in on that slide. Buck probably had to make a decision whether it was going to be close on him at second. They asked Jimmy to put the ball in play somewhere on the ground, preferably, and he did as Buckner took off. Certainly kept them out of the double play there anyway. Bah, Don Baylor is up. Has singled and struck out twice. Rips it. Foul. There's that third base foul line shot again. He did it on a breaking pitch, too. You'll see a zillion of those this summer. You also see some go fair. Against the wall, into the screen, and over everything. Nice well, scrap iron at second base with <laughs> now a little twisted knee to go along with the ankles and the elbow. And trainer Charlie Moss back to the drugstore for more ice bags. <laughs> Nothing in one to Baylor. One ball, one strike. Mack may be trying to steal a run here, Ned. He's got a two run lead. It's late in the game with that hit and run play with between Rice and Buckner. Try to get Buckner down there in some kind of scoring position for not only Baylor here, but Gedman, who's on deck. And that's not a bad idea at all. Baylor cracking that inside pitch again foul one ball two strikes to Don John McNamara sitting in on this one and happy to be here right now for the performance of Roger Clemens Red Sox are leading three to one in the eighth inning if you just joined us Roger Clemens has struck out 18 with one inning to go. Fastball, two and two. Major League record is 19. Taylor cracks a foul to the screen, and it's two and two. Minnesota now leading the Yankees six to four in their battle at Yankee Stadium. That's after five innings. Loudner, Lombardazzo have hit back to back homers for the Twins. Pierillo and Griffey have homered for New York. Gidry is gone and Ed Whitson is on. Getting his usual round of, of applause, I suppose, in Yankee Stadium. Butcher all the way so far from Minnesota. 2 2 to Don Baylor. Foul back out of play. Baylor lives. Three runs, eight hits, one error for Boston. One run, three hits, and one error for Seattle. The home run has told the story offensively. Gorman Thomas put the Mariners ahead of uh, Clemens with a home run in the seventh after Clemens had fanned 16 at that point. Then Dwight Evans with a three run homer in the seventh putting the Red Sox ahead. Two and two to Baylor. Three and two. So the crowd wouldn't mind to see another run or two put up here. But they're all waiting around. Not one soul is left here as they wait for the night. Walks Baylor. Fourth walk given up by Mike Moore, and he's kind of aiming the ball at Baylor that time. And Cotier coming out toward his pitcher. Moore has worked hard and well tonight. 
but in a circumstance that, uh, well, you'd almost have to be perfect. They've had activity in the Seattle bullpen. The batter will be Rich Gedman with runners at first and second. And that is going to be all for Moore, and he will get a well-deserved round of applause here. Hazard. Coming in from the bullpen, new pitching help for the Seattle Mariners as Mike Moore leads to a standing ovation by some of the folks here after realizing a job well done, but he has been up against a Roger Clemens on an almost impossible night. So Moore will leave. And we have the new hurler right now for Seattle. This will be the first relief appearance uh, for Mike Young as we told you he was just put down into that bullpen uh, situation today and the reason he had gone down there was because he was having a little problem as a starter consistently getting the ball over the plate. He has walked 10 and struck out 10 in four starts for this Mariner ball club holding a two and two record with a 5.89 earned run average. His outings have covered an 18 and a third innings of work giving up 22 hits and 12 runs all of those have been earned giving up a couple of round trippers. But as I said those numbers big 10 and 10 not the question not the, the fact that he had walked 10 and struck out 10 is just that he was working behind in the count quite a bit that caused him uh, a little bit of his problem. So with the addition maybe and I don't know maybe uh, the fact that he might be left handed and not getting over the plate and working in this ballpark here maybe Chuck Cottier decided to use uh, young Billy Swift who is of course as we know out of the University of Maine up the road here a bit in Orono so he'll be working in place of Young who was demoted today. All right we're set now with Rich Gedman up. Gedman one for three. Ball one. This year Rich has hit left handers six for nineteen at a three sixteen clip. Change his whole career around when they just let him go. And put him in there be against everybody after platooning him for a couple of seasons. I think the only left hand he has a play against been Bannister twice, hasn't he? he? Didn't start yeah. those two games. Very high in the air to right center field. Three players converging, and who's going to get it? Henderson, the center fielder. So there are two away. Tartable was out. Henderson and Calderon were over. So Young gets his first hitter. And Marty Barrett coming up. We're going to have another visit to the mound. Barrett in this one has flied deep to center, walked, and grounded to shortstop. And they want the right-hander from the bullpen. That lad, who is somebody at best? I don't know who it was out there but they are going to go the other way with right handed hitting Marty Barrett up. So best is coming in. The right hander best is relieving Matt Young who in his first relief stint does his job by getting a batter out the left handed hitter on a short fly ball to center field. So he does his job in this still very close ball game. It's three to one with an inning to go. People are thinking about the strikeouts. But the Mariners are still tight at Fenway Park. I mean, the only two runs down in this ballpark. So you are playing to try to stop the opposition from getting any more. Well, you certainly are. And that's exactly the way Cartier is thinking, too. He, uh, a little bit like John McNamara, you figure in the latter inning of the ballgame, although his club has been struggling a little bit, striking out a lot, he's got some people that can put some jump on a baseball and get it out of a ballpark, not only theirs. So he's playing it by... A little bit right by the uh, by the book tonight, trying to keep this game at exactly where it is at a two-run deficit for him. So he'll make his move here, his percentage move. He'll go to the bullpen and get Carl Best, who can really get it up there with some hurry on it. One and zero, and this will be his fourth appearance, all as a reliever, an even three earned run average, three hits given up in three innings, a run it was earned. He's walked two and he has struck out two. This uh, Seattle Mariner bullpen, as we have mentioned, blessed with a lot of hard throwers down there. Some of them yet uh, young enough, uh, enough wild enough to maybe cause them some problems. And just today, they've been joined by Nunez, Edward Nunez, who we know we have seen him throw hard. Oh yeah, uh, Young, who just left here tonight in this one uh, one appearance, one batter appearance against Gedman, he can certainly throw hard. So it's not exactly uh, you don't go up there with a bat looking for a trick pitch off any of these Seattle Mariner bullpenters. You just get it turned the volume turned up and 
try to find something you can really cut down on and whittle work. So many clubs want to have just one guy that come out there, the stud that can strike somebody out. They've got three or four. They and certainly they, do. Uh, in the long run, that would be pretty good. I would think Auger pretty well for Seattle, Monty. You could get uh, either a very strong, deep bullpen out of that or make a starter out of one. Of course, Matt Young is a starter. He's just there temporarily, probably, to get it back. This guy spent just a bit of time with Seattle last year, Ned. He was in 15 games with them, worked all as a reliever. In those 15 games, he worked 32 in the third innings and struck out 32 in the big league. So he wasn't overly impressed by any American League hitters when he first came up. He just did what he can do, and that's so hard. He can definitely throw hard. He's had big years, over over 100 strikeouts a couple of years in his minor league career. So uh, if he can find that strike zone consistently enough, and they feel that he can, somebody better watch it. Yeah. The Pawtucket Red Sox won their ball game tonight with Mike Rochford winning his third without a loss. Marty Barrett is up. 0 for 2. Red Sox leading 3 to 1. Again, if you just came in, they were waiting for the ninth inning because Roger Clemens has struck out 18 batters, one shy of the major league record with one inning to go. Meanwhile, it's just a two-run lead for the Red Sox. Certainly no blowout for Roger to concentrate strictly on strikeouts. He wants to win the ball game. Buckner at second, Baylor at first. Strike one to Barrett. The outfield straight away on Marty. Carl Best getting ready to pitch to Barrett. That is mud is to Jeff. Watch out. One ball, one strike. Conference right there. Old buddy Mike Easler has hit his first home run of the year for the Yankees. Came in the sixth inning with nobody on. Yankees trailing Minnesota at least six to five. Kind of a wild one at the stadium. The Mets romped to their 10th win in a row tonight by beating Atlanta 10 to 5, getting 14 hits. Strawberry homered. One ball, one strike to Marty Barrett. Shoots it off to right field foul, and it's one and two. Montreal seven, and Cincinnati two in the ninth. Cincinnati batting now. And the Phillies leading Houston by a 10 to 4 score after seven. Detroit has beaten Kansas City. That's the final two to one. Frank Tanana getting his third win, beating Dennis Leonard in a tough ball game. Again, Kansas City having trouble getting runs. Barrett. Checks a swing, foul tip, strike three. So it's a strikeout, and the two relief pitchers come on and do their jobs. We go to the ninth inning, and Roger Clemens with the Red Sox leading three to one. So it is the ninth inning with Roger Clemens, one strikeout away from a major league, tying a major league record, two strikeouts away from creating one. He has fanned 18 through the eight innings. And in that time, he has thrown 124 pitches, 84 for strikes. Changed defensively for the Red Sox in the ninth, Dave Stapleton playing first base. Stapleton replacing Baylor at first base. And it's still just a skinny lead for Roger, even though he's been so overpowering. There they are in right field. The K's are up. 18 of them. And this crowd pumped up and hanging around to see what happens in the ninth. The top of the order will be up against Clemens, Owen, Bradley, and Phelps. 
by Gowan, a teammate of Rogers in college, and a, the only switch hitter the Mariners have, has struck out single to right and fly deep to center. Clemens has allowed three hits, a home run by Gorman Thomas, single to Owen, and a single to Tartable. So here we go. Strike one. I wonder if he knows he's that close to a record. I, I don't know. He knows he has a Red Sox record. A little breaking ball for ball one. One ball, one strike to Owen. Little foul ball down the third base. And now the count is one and two. Owen really tried to duck away from that. Somehow you got the feeling that these fans are glad that that was a foul. Yeah. They all come to their feet again. They're looking back and they're glad that Baylor dropped that foul ball too. <laughs> got a Maybe. strike out out of it. Might make the difference. One ball, two strikes to Owen. <laughs> foul ball and the count hangs at one and two. Owen is not an easy man to strike out. We'll usually get the bat on the ball. One and two. Five the record. Nineteen for Roger Clemens. Major League record tied. He has two batters to go to try to set a new one. Here's Bradley. Ball one. Here is the record tire. Couldn't lay off behind. 1 0 pitch to Bradley. Ball two. Bill Bradley has struck out three times. He was number two, number seven, and number 15. Two balls, one strike, and he's still working like a machine out there. Strike two. Two and two. And here they come up at Fenway. I'm surprised they're going back down. I would think they would just stay up. Yep. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stand up. Clemens has set a major league record for strikeouts in a game. 20. Let him yell. 20 strikeouts in a game. And here's Ken Phelps. Ball one. That would be something if he could finish with a flare and strike out the side. The way he started, why not? <laughs> he did that. Count is two and nothing to Phelps. Oh, mercy. the strike in there two balls and one strike to Phelps the left-handed batter he has struck out three times he has been number three number eight and number 16 to shortstop Romero games over and Roger Clemens has fanned 20 for a new record what a performance by the kid from the University of Texas The whole team is there.
Keep it right here for a minute. 20 strikeouts, a new major league record in one single game. Final score, Red Sox three, the Mariners one. Steve Lyons is patting his glove as if he did it. A tremendous hand for Roger Clemens. So the final score is Boston three and Seattle one. We'll be back in a moment with our instant replay.